In this video, I want to showcase and chat about the new information kind of released from Offensive Security, a large training provider and industry certification body in cybersecurity and ethical hacking and penetration testing and all that fun stuff. Uh, this is hot off the press. This came out this morning, I think about 8.30 uh, I guess Eastern time for me, December 1st, 2021. And uh, without further ado, let's just kind of dive right into it. I'll show you here, we'll go over to my screen. Uh, we have a tweet, we have a little notification, uh, a messaging from Offensive Security that says, hey, there are changes to the OSCP exam structure. Now, OSCP, if you don't know, OSCP is the Offensive Security Certified Professional. It is a course and exam and ultimately certification that has been largely considered one of the uh, staples of a ethical hacker or a penetration tester or anyone into red teaming and offensive adversarial cybersecurity work. Um, it is a honestly something that's great for getting you through HR, getting your resume across if you're looking for a job, looking for career opportunities, etc. And it's kind of had this mystique to it and that it is a tough exam and it is still the tip of the iceberg for what you'll be learning in cybersecurity throughout your career and this entire vocation and passion. Uh, anyway, let's get back to it. There have been some changes that were released to the Offensive Security Certified Professional course in 2020. There was an update that Offensive Security had released that had revamped some of the content, recreated the videos, um, presented a new course guide and book, and it actually added new instructions on bash scripting and some Linux scripting as well as Active Directory. Um, you know, the big enterprise thing used for managing users, computers, groups, or organizational units, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in the Windows world. Uh, a big technology used by just about all companies, like maybe 90 to 95% of businesses are using an Active Directory setup. Anyway, uh, it says these changes will better reflect the current PWK materials, which is referring to the 2020 update, uh, and most importantly, the skills needed to be successful in an information security position and professional in today's landscape. And they give us a link here. Uh, now, this is true. Th this is this is true. Uh Active Directory is certainly what you are going to be seeing and what you're up against in the world that we live in if you're a penetration tester, a red teamer, etc. Uh, that's just a fact. When we get into their update that they've linked and this blog post on their website, uh, the introduction says, hey, as a leader in the cybersecurity training space, we at Offensive Security are incredibly proud of our flagship course, PWK, and ultimately OSCP come from it. It's earned a reputation of being one of the most sought after credentials in the industry. Has been continues to be one thing that tests technical skills, hands-on application-based and practical exam, but it's testing their critical thinking, problem-solving, enumeration, just persistence and dedication, etc. cetera. Uh, uh, again, true. This paragraph reads a little chest thumpy to me. Like, hey, you know, uh, oh, sorry, click that link there. It, it reads uh, like, hey, you know, we're the top. Uh, and that is v valid in a way. It, it, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try and approach this with a critical eye uh, as much as I can because I consider myself good friends and buddies with the, the folks over at Offensive Security, but I also consider myself uh, a member of the community and just a guy and a dude that would like to share his opinion on this stuff because for some reason people listen. Uh, <laughs> Traditionally, in the past, they've never disclosed any details about the OSCP exam. It has, however, been the worst kept secret. Everyone knows the structure, five machines, total of 100 points. Typically, there's a buffer overflow, and that's worth 25 points. Um, when they had made these changes to the OSCP or the PWK course back in 2020, they had not updated the exam. Uh, which was interesting because then everyone's still taking the course new. Okay, these new additions, Active Directory and Bash Scripting and some of this, are not going to be something that I'll be tested on. Uh, maybe that was a relief. Maybe that was something they could kind of hang their hat on, say like, cool, I don't have to hard charge on that material, but it's still good to know. Uh, however, now we're seeing this change and we're seeing this update that it will be reflected in the exam. Now, before anyone goes crazy, I will scroll down to the very, very bottom. Uh, they note here, hey, these changes are going to be available on January 11th, 2022. 
all scheduled exams for January 11th onward are subject to the new structure. Uh, now, you're asking, okay, what is this new structure? Here's what we're looking at. It'd still be 100 points, total of 60 points versus 40 points, uh, but they're in two different pools, right? Under the 60 points umbrella and bucket, there are three individual targets, machines, hosts, right? One of those is potentially a buffer overflow. It might not be, you can see that right there, it might not be part of the exam. Uh, and that is a little bit of a dice roll now. Because a lot of folks, hey, wanted to get super sharp on the buffer overflow because they know it was a definite guaranteed 25 points on the OSCP exam. Now, you still have to make sure you're smart on it, but you might not even see it when, you, when it comes to crunch time. Interesting, right? Uh, but these two-step targets are, are 20 points per machine, 10 points for low privilege uh, and 10 points for actual privilege escalation, becoming root, becoming the administrator or system. And we have three of those where the buffer overflow might be in there. So it has lost, the, the buffer overflow has lost its notch on the wall, right? But probably the most interesting and new change here is this 40 points perspective here. There's two clients and one domain controller, which means there'll ultimately be, I, I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, six hosts rather than the five there were previously. And this is going to be Active Directory. This is going to be a Windows Realm and environment that uh, has trusts and has a domain to it and has things that you'll have to kind of explore, maybe use some Bloodhound, maybe use some Crack Map Exec, maybe do some stuff that honestly, OSEP, like the Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester, actually gets into and talks about more. I don't know if they get into all of that within OSCP. And I'll be completely honest with that. Uh, I had taken OSCP back in 2018. Uh, so I did not have the new material and I haven't gone through because I have the certification and didn't need to. I, I haven't gone through the 2020 update. I know Active Directory is in there. Truthfully, I don't know what it covers, like actually seeing eyes on it. Like I could look on the website and see the syllabus, but I don't know, no, you know? No partial points will be awarded. Points are awarded only for the full exploit chain of the domain. So that is 40 points of this test with no partial points being awarded while you have to get all of the attack chain, the entire compromise. So that means that this is absolutely necessary because you're still checking out the additional changes here. The addition and importance of Active Directory, yes, that's foot stomped, emphasized. The decreased value of buffer overflow, increased value of bonus points. Uh, so bonus points uh, are a talking point, but let me get into this passing grade element there because the 40 is absolutely necessary. You cannot pass completing just alone the 60 points. And even if you get some, a little bit of the Active Directory, if you don't get it, that's game. From the way I'm reading this, from the way I'm understanding and inter interpreting. Uh, whew. Okay. So that means you really need to focus on this active directory because that's the only way that you'll pass. And maybe you could get, okay, the 60 uh, points or... or I'm being cumulative here, adding and stockpiling these 40 points for Active Directory. Say you solve one machine completely, and then say you had low privilege access on another of the three independent targets. That will give you 60, 70, a passing grade. However, there are now more bonus points available if you complete the labs and the exercises throughout the PWK course. Now, I had completed the PWK labs personally because I wanted the extra five points. And at the time, it was only worth five points. Um, I didn't end up needing it. I did A-OK -okay on my OSCP exam and was able to compromise just about everything. Um, I was able to compromise everything. So it wasn't a concern, but I had poured so much time into going through those labs and exercises because it was li literally answering every single question in the course book, which is now even longer in the 2020 ex edition. And it, writing everything, having it out, displaying it nicely in like LaTeX and Markdown and getting it rendered to a beautiful PDF. That took forever. Uh, I don't know. And I've, and I've said to people, look, if you're feeling confident, 
don't feel like you have to do these bonus points. Now, I don't know. I don't know how that weighs compared to your absolutely relying on this Active Directory set. And I, truthfully, I am not an Active Directory guy because I didn't take it. I didn't learn. Like I had a little bit of OSEP, an experienced penetration tester, but not in OSCP. So that's the lay of the land right now. And this discusses the absolute value and need for it um, because Active Directory is so critical in the penetration testing and ethical hacking landscape in the world that we live in, which ultimately, in my opinion, as, as I, we, we cruise through some of this, everything that I've kind of already discussed when it, when it will happen January 11th, um, we will continue to accept lab reports that do not contain a fully exploited Active Directory set until March 14th. Ah, uh, Lab reports must include the full exploitation of an Active Directory set, including the domain controller for all exams taken after March 14th in order to be eligible for them. So that's weird. The bonus, the bonus stuff has been increased without Active Directory further than the exam date change, but then afterward it will be mandatory for, so the 10 stays either before or after March 14th, but after you need active directory. Okay. Okay. That's all that. Uh, let me take a look at some of the community response. If that's cool. Uh, <laughs> some good, some good trolling at the top. Some, uh, are feeling this is a little bit short notice. Some response. Otherwise I, I know people, I have friends, I have genuinely close personal friends that are taking this exam, uh, January. January of 2022 and they've been studying and they've been practicing but they had put they had put active director away because it wasn't a concern it wasn't a needed thing for OSCP in the exam it is necessary for OSEP right and they had said to me what the heck why don't why don't I just why don't I just go ahead and take OSEP then if OSCP is going to still be focusing on active directory I don't know if it's going to be all of the intensity and complexity that OSEP is, but you still absolutely have to get those 40 points. You have to absolutely compromise the active directory portion to be able to pass. So it is, it is necessary. With that said, they're taking it on January, like after the January 11th mark. And they had said to me, like, I might just reschedule because this is, this is short notice. I, 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 I want to have a little bit more time to prep and get smarter on active directory. If that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and oh, and this, this person says here over on the screen, uh, now consider getting a lab time again, as there are no exam spots before January 11th. Oof. Yeah. So that the, the does feel a little bit of a switcheroo. Um, no increase in lab time of official statement from offensive security, no changes to exam restrictions, just the structure of the exam. No changes to exam, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, this guy's this guy's latching on to the full 40 points or bust. Zero or 40, pass or fail. Um, um, um. Okay, okay. And ultimately, there is still some good response here that I agree with because you, you, do need to have Active Directory in the mix because it is vital to what an offensive security professional legitimately does in the real world. Um, and that's what your course teaches now. So I think this is a good thing. It is a little bit of a hard pill to swallow because it, it, it has that short notice um, and the hard cut between, hey, the... 40 points or nothing, that is is something that I don't know how other folks will react to. Ultimately, I still feel like this is a good thing for what Offensive Security wa wants the certification in this exam to be. But um, we'll see how the rest of the world responds. Um, I, I understand the hesitations, but it is better for making OSCP what it should be. And we've been waiting for this since the course update in 2020. Now we're rolling into 2022 and this is how it's going to be. So 
I hope that breaks it down for you or at least bashes it across your head a little bit more. Um, and that was the news and chatter in the Twitterverse, how I was made aware of this. And I hope maybe that's a little bit more insight and thoughts as to kind of my perspective on this. Would I retake OSCP to go through this offensive security portion with Active Directory in the mix? Yes, absolutely, hands down. If I hadn't taken it earlier and still wanted to take it now, I still would. Um, and it would actually make me sharper and stronger on Active Directory. And I would take that as a great learning point. I would take that in stride as some great education to really bring to myself. Um, people taking OSCP right now and they don't know what, or, or, or if they're taking the exam just after this change might be a little bit of a culture shock. But maybe that pool will not weigh the same way that the future pool does for people taking it after January 11th, they sign up for the course and now are seeing this new material for the first time, knowing that Active Directory is going to be mandatory for the exam. So that's my thoughts, everybody. That's it. Uh, I don't know. Thanks for thanks for listening to me ramble for a little bit. Thanks for hanging on. Uh, I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how to end this video. This has really just been me talking. So bye.